न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद शालन बेनेडिक्ट Hello there. Very good evening. Welcome to another edition of Face to Face. Uh, we're all trying to make sense of what is happening in Sri Lanka's political sphere right now. Um, Parliament was prorogued uh, today. There are several new appointments that were made. Uh, a new uh, high-ranking positions, of course, are being filled by the president. Uh, there is uh, there are rumours circulating that it's not a presidential election that's going to come first, but a general election. However, the president has explicitly stated on multiple occasions that what is coming first this year is a presidential election. Uh, well, of course, to try and help us make sense of everything that's happening here in Sri Lanka. We've got with us uh, Dr. Pakisoti Saranamuthi. He's the executive director of the Center for Policy Alternatives. Thank you very much, Dr. Pakisoti, for joining us Thank on you. our program uh, this evening. So first things first, uh, today uh, we saw a book being released uh, by former President uh, Gota Be Rajapaksa saying that um, his, uh, he, him being ousted from the presidency was an international conspiracy. Now, I myself haven't had the opportunity to go through this book or, or even get my hands on one of it. Uh, I, I don't think you've had uh, no, I haven't had the opportunity, the opportunity as, as well. But there are some uh, news reports coming out uh, where he's uh, gone on to uh, even um, uh, draw or, or, or mention uh, the former army commander, uh, the former director of the SIS, and, and, and many other individuals. Um, the title of the book just says that it's a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. His ousting from the presidency is a conspiracy. So I, I, I presume that the book is going to argue that line of thought. Is, is it a plausible uh, kind of well, I mean, response? You know, if someone alleges a conspiracy, and mm -hmm. here is a conspiracy with regard to regime change, mm -hmm. Presumably, they have the evidence hmm. for it. And if they don't have the evidence for it, we can't accept this argument that it was a conspiracy. And it's all con just conjecture? Absolutely conjecture. You know, if you are saying that someone conspired to get rid of you as president or whatever, you must have the hard evidence, no? Hmm. Because he, I, I understand, as I said, I haven't read the book, I understand that he's talking about an international conspiracy. Hmm as well. So, you know, where has the evidence been got from and has it been presented in the book or is it just conjecture and is it going to go down very well with whatever remains of his constituency or is it going to persuade anyone that this is actually what happened? Hmm. And, and I, why weren't any of these revealed, of course, when the Supreme exactly. Court took up that matter? Exactly. Well, all of those aside, I don't think we can really discuss too much about the con <laughs> content of the book because uh, neither you nor I have I've read uh, really it. gone through it. Uh, so let's move on to try and make sense of what's really happening in Sri Lanka right now. Uh, today there were two appointments uh, that were made, uh, COPA chairman and COPE chairman. Uh, one of the more controversial appointments is the chairman of COPE, Rohita Abegunavarthana, has been appointed as the chairman of COPE. Uh, we've had uh, many other chairmen of COPE, uh, even the immediate uh, former chairman of COPE who have performed sort of a yeoman service in, in keeping uh, state-owned enterprises in check, state-owned enterprises that have run amok, uh, that have caused so much losses to the country were brought to some sort of a check, some form of, uh, even a minute form of accountability at the COPE hearings. But with this new appointment and, of course, uh, the scepticism surrounding uh, his ab ability to really perform in that role. Uh, what do you see f as the role of COPE moving forward in this, at least in the final few months that this parliament is Well, selected? I mean, this is the thing, is, is that given the intense speculation mm. that we will have a general election mm. before we have a presidential election, mm -hmm and that that general election might well be in June or July or whatever it is. That soon? Well, yes, because we have to have a presidential election between September and October mm. of this year. Uh, the idea of putting this particular individual mm. as chairman of this committee may well be to satisfy the SLPP or whatever, mm. but um, I don't think it's sort of intended as a long-term appointment hmm. as such. But then on the other hand, we never know. We may, we may well have the presidential election first hmm. and we can go into next year for a general election. Hmm. So I, are you trying to say that uh, the appointment of Rohit Abegunavardhana and, uh, and, the, and the sort of 
temporary uh, measure that you insinuated surrounding his appointment is indicative that a general election is more likely than a presidential? Well, I mean, this is not the only indication, and it may not well be an indication. What are the other as, indications? Well, I mean, I think the thing is this, is, is that the opinion polls keep insisting that Anur Kumar Adesanayake and the JVP are on a high, hmm. that they are going to win the presidency and that they will win a general election. So, you know, the thing is, if I was the president, and of course I'm not, <laughs> I would want to expose what their popular support is. Hmm. And the way of doing it would be to go to a general election. Hmm. Now, in a general election, the question is going to be, hmm. can a single party get 113 seats to form a government of its own? Okay. Now, if it is the JVP who emerges as the single largest party, without getting 113 seats, who are they going to form a government with? Mm. Or are they going to be a minority government? Mm. Likewise, if the SJB doesn't get 113, mm. who are they going to form a government with? Yeah. So I think if it exposes mm. the popular support mm. of the SJB and indeed the JVP, the president may well feel that he has a certain advantage, hmm. yeah, that neither of, you know, that the opposition is as disunited as possible, that they can't really come together, and that when a presidential election comes, hmm. it's a question of who the anti-JVP forces hmm. will rally behind. Hmm. Is it going to be Ranil Vikramasinghe, the incumbent president? Hmm. Or is it going to be Sachit Premadasa, who can't still lead his party hmm. to an electoral victory in a general election? Hmm. So you're saying that by holding a general election, the incumbent president will be increasing his chances, whatever they may be, at a presidential election, rather than going into the presidential election directly? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So... So do you think that even after explicitly informing the people of this country that it's a presidential election that we're going to have this year, uh, that statement has been made uh, time and time again, uh, even in Parliament, uh, it has been affirmed by various other individuals in positions of power. Do you think that the president will go back on his word to hold well, the general I mean, election? The, the, the point about politics is nothing is permanent. No, at the end of the day, hmm. the power to dissolve Parliament has hmm. been given to the president. Hmm. When he made that statement, he obviously felt that it was, would be a presidential election. Mm. And come on, let's face it. As far as the country is concerned, mm. they are not going to feel cheated if mm. a general election comes first. Mm. Because as far as they're concerned, there is a question of the legitimacy mm. of this parliament. Mm. I mean, at the Centre for Policy Alternatives, we just did a survey and we found out that in terms of trust hmm. that people have, political parties only have about 19 to 22 percent. Hmm. You know, so the question of infusing hmm. political parties and parliament hmm. with greater legitimacy hmm. is one that is very clearly on the political agenda. So an early general election will certainly resolve that. Hmm. Uh, the president continued to reiterate the fact that you know 40 new pieces of legislation have been passed, there's 60 more to come, so this 60 more might not come if the general election comes along. 60 more may not come, and with regard to the 40 that have come, I think people in the country need to know hmm. what these pieces of legislation are hmm. and how it impacts on their lives. Hmm. Because, you know, there is a public perception mm. that this government doesn't have any sympathy mm. or empathy with the people at large. Mm. And so if they believe that they're doing the right thing, mm. a good thing, what the country needs, mm. they need to be able to communicate that. Mm. And that's what needs to happen. And God knows, maybe it will happen after the Aurudu uh, is over. Mm. But it does need to happen in terms of people recognizing that, okay, this government has been passed since 2022 or whatever, mm. and it just doesn't, you know, it hasn't sort of sat on its haunches and done nothing. Mm. It has done X, Y, and Z, and X, mm. Y, and Z have had 
a beneficial impact hmm. on their lives. That message needs to go out. Uh, this idea surrounding elections, holding elections, I think this idea was mooted before uh, even, if my memory <coughs> serves me right, it was uh, Harshan Rajakarana from the SJB who said it on this program, but I think it was mentioned before also, to hold both elections together or hold two elections together. It was mooted during the, uh, <coughs> when the local government election was due. Uh, that call was to hold the local government election and the provincial council elections together uh, to save money, of course, uh, and expedite the entire process because we're so delayed on holding those elections. Do you think that there is the off chance of the general election and the presidential election being held together? No, I don't think it will be held together. I mean, the argument for it, of course, is saving money or whatever. Mm. But the issue here is, is about power, about political power, the balance of power. And I think the president... <clears throat> and the political parties would want to test mm. their support in the country before they go for the big prize, which is the presidency. But in the interest of the general public and, of course, having some form of stability in the country, what do you think is, uh, in, in your opinion, what do you think is the best course of action? Is it to have the presidential election first, then the general, or the general first, then the presidential, or have both of them together? Frankly, I don't think I have a very definite view on this, the mm. important thing is, is that both elections are held mm. and that they're held, one according to the schedule as far as the constitution is concerned, mm. and the general election, I think, earlier than when before parliament's term expires. Now, because there's a question of legitimacy of this current parliament. Now, of course, there is uh, the question, or, or there are still those who are skeptic about an election being held this year, let alone a general election or a presidential election, any election for that matter. But however, we've seen uh, time and time again, especially uh, during the past decade, a lot of political conspiracies uh, coming into the fore and the Supreme Court having to intervene on many of these instances and put their foot down and say, this is unconstitutional. This can't be done. We saw that happen during the 52-day government. Uh, we saw that happen in many instances, especially during this past decade. And one of the most recent uh, orders that were given by the Supreme Court, an interim order, was to release the money that was allocated in the budget for the year 2023 to hold the local government election. That order hasn't been complied with to date which uh, resulted in the indefinite postponement of the elections. I don't believe uh, the nominations even have been cancelled as yet. To correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there was discussion going in Parliament, but nothing has done, been done on that. <laughs> so technically, we're still in an election period as far as uh, the black letter law in Sri Lanka is concerned. So for those who have, uh, well, who are sceptic about an election not being held this year, what then? Well... With regard to the local government elections and before that the provincial council elections, I think, yes, there are people who want elections and believe that elections should be held on schedule. But I think the vast majority of the people in this country look to the general and the presidential election as being the most important ones. Okay. Yeah? With regard to the question of whether the general and the presidential election will be held, the point about the general election is, is it doesn't have to be held this year. Mm. Parliament, it can go on till 2025. With regard to the presidential election, we have a stipulated time period mm. between September and October. Now, <clears throat> if a government wants to uh, not have elections in mm. that period, it will presumably have to go to Parliament mm. and get a two-thirds majority mm. Some of us will go to court mm. with regard to it, and the courts might well say, look, two-thirds majority plus a referendum. Mm. If all of those things are ignored, mm. we could well have another Arga layer. Mm. Because the issue with regard to the Arga layer as well was is about the legitimacy of our government. Mm. And if you're going to muck around with elections, mm. then there is a serious threat to our democracy, and I think after the Aragalea, people won't accept that. So the reason why I'm, I'm questioning you on this uh, possibility, or probable future at least, is because um, even last year, I, I distinctly remember that uh, all political parties were really gearing up 
for local government elections. Nominations were called. The Elections Commission was ready. And uh, the Elections Commission went so far as to put out a statement saying that there were 15 to 20 attempts by the government to try and postpone the election. It all began with just talking points, you know, discussions about uh, increasing female representation, uh, you know, demarcation, mm -hmm. proper demarcation, uh, abolition of the local government bodies uh, as a whole. So those kind of topics uh, were discussed a little bit uh, just a few months ago as well, uh, electoral mm -hmm. reforms in the country. Now, once Basil Rajapaksa returned to the island, uh, Udayanga Virathungar also put up a post saying that he is coming for the general election. So what if, what if um, the government decides to hold the general election at a very close time period to the presidential election or when the presidential election is due, you said it's between September and, and, October. and October. So say somewhere around the beginning of September or mid-September, general elections are scheduled during that period. So it, it technically creates an impossibility uh, for the government to go ahead or for the Elections Commission per se to go ahead and hold no. the presidential election. What then? You see, when a government ignores the rulings of the highest court in the land. Mm -hmm. When a government then tries rather tricky means mm -hmm. of trying to postpone an election, there is only one alternative that I see as far as the people of the country are concerned. They have to come out on the streets mm. and prevent that. I mean, we can try court actions and whatever it is and say that, look, it's far too close to the presidential election or you hold both elections at the same time mm. and all of that. <clears throat> but if a government ignores mm. the rulings of the Supreme Court of the, of the land, mm -hmm. then we have to take matters into our own hand because ultimately sovereignty lies with us mm. and we are the change we want to make. <laughs> Kind of an extreme choice. Let's let's hope no, and pray that of course it doesn't go there. Yeah, and it, no, absolutely, it is an extreme choice because it's an extreme situation. Hmm. And, and 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 would you would you say that it is uh, a probability, a possibility in the future? What of a government going to postpone the presidential election? Yes. No, I don't think so. I think the government will hold the presidential election on time. Hmm. It's a question of as to whether we will have a general election before that. Hmm. So, there are political parties coming out now um, giving the general public certain hints about their policy. There is no concrete um, statement uh, regarding the policy uh, of any political party that has been put out yet, and rightly so, because the elections uh, have not been announced yet. Um, judging by what there is to see, mm -hmm. uh, what would be, of course, your preferred um, line of thought or who do you think is more in sync with what the general public need right now? Well, the issue with regard to who is in sync I think is also being driven by the public opinion polls mm. which say that the JVP is going to get X number of seats or you know is going to win a general election. It's going to be that, that absolute landslide for the mm. JVP and that uh, Anur Kumar Desanayaka will win 50 plus 1 on the first uh, ballot mm. and so in that sense that is the sort of general trend mm. in the country but you know as they used to say a week is a long time in politics and if this election is going to be in eight months time or in five months time or whatever a number of things can happen that could change mm. I don't think all political parties have started their campaigns for an election in earnest, mm. you know. So in that respect, they are talking in broad brushstrokes. Mm. I mean, the JVP, for example, says that it will renegotiate the IMF deal. Okay. Now I what, think the, the SJB also says that. Yeah, so now what parts of the IMF deal are they going to renegotiate? Not certain. Mm. The JVP, again, says that it will deal with anti-corruption. Hmm. Now, what is the JVP going to do with regard to money that is out of this country? Hmm. Because, I mean, I say this because, for example, in the Philippines, hmm. the money that the Marcos has allegedly stole hmm. has not been recovered. Yet. Yeah. I mean, I think it's less than 10% that has been recovered, and this happened 40 years ago. <laughs> 
So then what are they going to go after the money that and is... And other families in, back in power. <laughs> and the families back in power. So it's then the money that's supposedly in this country hmm. that they're going to go after. Hmm. Now, you know, you make a promise like that at an election hmm. and then you are unable to deliver, hmm. then you're going to have a backlash hmm. of some sort. Likewise, I mean, the SJB has to make clear what it is that they're going to uh, okay. renegotiate, what are the real differences between their policies with regard to the IMF and whatever, hmm. and the policies of the Ranil Vikramasinghe government. Hmm. You know, that the government has to be, as I said, I think much more empathetic and sympathetic in terms of telling people why we're doing this, how long it's going to take, hmm. all of that. You mean the current government? The current government. Okay. You know, so hopefully hmm. all of these things will be clarified once an election campaign, whether it be general or presidential or whatever, hmm. commences. Hmm. Yeah? I mean, you know, some people make the argument, look, if the JVP is so popular, hmm. why on earth should it spell out its policies? Hmm. Because that's only going to get them into needless arguments. Hmm. You know, so well, that's politics. But I think is the it population... Huh? Is it acceptable, though? Well, that is for the population to decide. Hmm. You know, and I think this is the thing, is, is that is the population going to be discerning enough Mm. in terms of saying, look, no, we want to know what your policies are. Mm. Or is it the case that, look, we've given the UNP and the SLFP 75 years and they've screwed us up in style. Mm. So now it's the time for the next guy. Mm. How disillusioned is the population that without wanting to know what exactly the policies are, mm. they're going to vote in one particular direction. But I think um, the concern among the population and, and, and the reason for this kind of a response, you know, we don't care what your policies are, you know, we're going to give you a go, is partially because the SLFP affiliated other parties, UNP and the breakaways of UNP have been given power uh, for the past 75 years, but also that no government that came into power really stuck to their policies. It was you know, what can we do today uh, to just make it into tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Nobody really thought about what should be done uh, tomorrow or the day after or five years, ten years ahead. Nobody really thought about that. It's just how can I get through the day? How can I ensure that my power is secured today so that I can, you know, last the day? Yeah. We as a country are terribly bad at planning. <laughs> and implementing. Planning, implementing and a willingness to make the sacrifices necessary for tomorrow and day after and whatever, hmm. you know. And so I think, you know, there is, a, there is an argument to be made that there is a culture of entitlement hmm. and there's a culture of complaint. Hmm. I mean, if you look at it, I've read Sri Lankan, free education, free health, job in the public service, hmm. you're looked after from womb to tomb. Hmm. Why would you want to change that? You know. Well, because now you're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. And the question, therefore, is, is that is any government, any political party, going to stick with this hmm. in order to set things right for the future? Hmm. Or are they going to change because they want to get political power and hmm. form a government? And that, I think, is, is what the population has also got to recognize. But it doesn't happen in, mm. in most democracies. I mean, people vote for 101 reasons, mm. you know, and it's not a single one. And so it's, it's, it's not just the, uh, the lack of political literacy here in Sri Lanka. This is how it's done across the no, world. Yes. yes, yes, it's been done across the world. But I think there are sort of different degrees mm. with which goes, mm. you know. And, I mean, for example, there are what? couple of million people in the United States that still believe that Trump won the last election. <laughs> and, and the case may be that he might win the next. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, since you um, spoke about the rising popularity of the National People's Power Movement and how the people are, you know, drawn towards it for sometimes the wrong reasons, but hopefully they can clarify these matters and, and, and maybe the people will take that into account as well. 
you've been studying politicians in Sri Lanka, how they, uh, how they act, how they move forward. Uh, judging with the history of the JVP uh, that is being thrown at them time and time again now, uh, do you think that uh, the arguments that are being built by the opposition parties, their oppositions, uh, saying that it will be a brutal regime, it will be a socialist regime, uh, it will be something uh, that you didn't even dream of in your wildest dreams uh, that is going to happen in the future. Do you think that ho that argument holds any water? Well, I mean, the only way to meet those criticisms and mm -hmm. fears and doubts and all of that is to come out unequivocally, hmm. apologize. I think if they'd, nothing they've else. done that. Insufficiently. Insufficiently. Okay, okay. Insufficiently. Apologize for what? they consider themselves responsible hmm. for in the past. And that's going to be a long shot because there is, of course, um, some ambiguity <laughs> at the very least surrounding the incidents that took place because there's one interpretation from one party and another from another. No, look, I mean, we, we can debate the numbers. Definitely. Yeah, but we do know that, yes, the government committed atrocities at that time and so did the JVP. Hmm. Hmm. So what, what I'm saying here is this, is, is that if a political party wants to allay fears hmm. that it's going to behave like what it did in the past, hmm. they must come out and say, look, it's not going to happen again. So sans we an apology, sans an apology uh, th there, there have been instances where certain uh, forms of apologies were issued, not, not an official statement, uh, definitely not as adequate Lee, as you uh, as you no, want it, an so official sends sends uh, an apology like that. Do you believe that then uh, the argument of the oppositions holds some water? Well, I mean, it, that's the only thing that they can do. Hmm. That's the only thing that they can do. They can acknowledge that yes, hmm. they didn't behave as a party should in a democ democracy. Well, technically, they weren't a party at the time. <laughs> well, <or laughs> they were suspended. Group a group or whatever, they were suspended, but they still thought about themselves as a party, mm, and, mm. you know. And they must come out and say that, look, we have turned our back on our past. Mm. Yes, we made a mistake. I mean, in 1994, mm. when President Kumarathunga first ran for office, mm. I think she started with an apology for what happened between 1970 and 77. Okay, okay. And then she started talking about capitalism with a humane face and all of that, mm, mm, mm. you know. I mean, likewise, for example, I'm sure the JVP will be able to win votes in the North if they change their policy on devolution, for example. Well, there's only one way that we can uh, really see what happens, and that's uh, once we go into an election, uh, which hopefully will come uh, this time around. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pakis Sotisaranamutha, for helping us, of course, well, make sense. Hopefully I did. <laughs> <laughs> make sense of what's really happening uh, in the political arena here in Sri Lanka. And it's important that we uh, continue to follow these because these matters, uh, like it or not, uh, will impact our future, uh, the future of generations to come in Sri Lanka and this beautiful country as a whole. We have been complacent in the past. We have made many mistakes. Uh, but let's m let those mistakes and failures be the pillars of our success in the future and vote right, vote smart, make an informed decision at the upcoming elections. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and God bless.